What's going on, everybody? Welcome to First Person Shooter History. This is our very first episode in a very exciting series in which we're going to explore, examine, and otherwise enjoy countless titles in the history of today's most popular video game genre. Each episode, we're going to take an individual game, learn all about where it came from, discuss the good and the bad, and what impact, if any, it left on the first person shooters or gaming as a whole. And today, for our very first episode, we're going to be talking about Maze War. Enjoy. Maze War was released in 1977 at Xerox Corporation for the Xerox Auto and Xerox Star computer systems. Now to get this out of the way right off the bat, if you're looking at the release date for this game on the video and you're asking to yourself, hey, didn't this come out earlier to answer your question in a way, yes, it did. This game was inspired by the Emilite PDS-1 game Maze. This game had been around for a couple of years, it was very popular at MIT at the time, and through friends of friends, the source code made its way to some employees of the Xerox Corporation, and they decided to remake this for their own computer system. Side note, Xerox used to make computers and video games. Sort of. We'll come back to the sort of later. Anyhow, the basic idea of this game is you traverse a maze as a living, breathing eyeball on game points by eliminating your opponent with what appears to be some kind of Superman-style heat vision blast. To me, this game was one of the most lucrative employee benefit packages ever, or was the ultimate office time waster on steroids. So computers were a little bit pricey back in this day. In fact, the Star, the latter of these two systems this game ran on, cost over $16,000 in 1981. That's over 40 grand today. Essentially, there wasn't exactly a line out the door at the midnight release of this thing with people waiting to fork over cash to take one of these bad boys home. And this is the 70s too. At this time, computers in the home, it wasn't even a thing. You didn't have them in your house. If you had a computer, it was only at work. So, to play a game like Maze War, you had to do it at the office. How cool is that? The day when your average employee can't wait to get home to hit up their Call of Duty or Battlefield, in 1977, you couldn't wait to get into work to play some more Maze War. Now, like its predecessors, this game never received a commercial release. Would it have worked if it had? Probably not. Even though the autos from a creative and technical sense were revolutionary in the personal computer industry, and the star had a decent production run, their success is ultimately hampered by the very high price tag and a lack of support from Xerox's upper management. If anybody bought one of these things, it would have been a business or university. They would have wanted it for something besides having a glorified game console. Good thing, yours truly has deep pockets and was able to procure one of these relics in its fame game. I'm just kidding. The footage you're watching is actually a recreation by a hobbyist developer and internet presence known as Blue Teak. I'm going to link the game below. As the making of this video, it's available for download for Windows and Mac OS. Sir Blue Teak does have a YouTube channel of his own where he talks about this game and how he made it. Like he took measurements of the screen to make it all proportionate. It's really cool stuff. This thing runs great on my home network. Definitely check it out. Now, given this game was released at a time before first person shooters or heck, even video games were established as a thing, there wasn't a lot to compare this to. But it is a game that was not the first, and there are objective factors that determine quality, so we're going to break this sucker down and give it a rating. Graphics. Now, as we know, this game was not the first of its kind. The earliest games that qualify as first-person shooters are Maze for the Emilike PDS-1 and Spacem, which ran on the Play Doh network. And both of those games utilize wireframe vector graphics. Maze War at Xerox used raster graphics, giving it the black and white interface you see here. And it was the first FPS to ever do so. Something I've always wondered about this game, why the eyeballs? These things are supposed to represent people, right? The best theory I have about this is that at the time, due to the displays this game would have run on, the fact that Maze can have pretty long hallways, from the perspective of a player, the developers wanted to have something that would stick out, like an eyeball, to make sure there's no way a player could blend in with a wall. So why not a stick figure with an eyeball on top? Hmm. Three points for graphics. Gameplay. Look, obviously, this game is super straightforward and simple. Is that a bad thing? No. Simple games can be of the most fun. There is a reason people still play Solitaire, Minesweeper, and Tetris, and in my opinion, Mazor falls in with the same idea. I'm playing this game now in 2018, in the making of this video, and it's fun. I could see myself taking this to my office and making moves to get myself and coworkers written up for goofing off on the clock playing this thing. Movement is one unit at a time. You can go forward, you can go backwards, you can turn 90 degrees right, you can turn 90 degrees left. You cannot look up, you cannot look down, you sure as hell cannot freaking jump. I mean, you're an eyeball. Eyeballs can't jump, but they can walk and shoot laser beams. I'm done. Three points for gameplay. Now this game had no sound, but... Given when it was released, I think that's understandable because there was no established criteria for what kind of features a game should have. So I'm not going to hold that against it. I'll give it a default point in place of the sound. 
Same thing for story. Wasn't expected, so we're not going to hold it against it. Defunct point for story. That's going to bring our total score for Maze War to 8 out of 10. Did this game have an original idea? No. It's a remake of Maze, and that's all it was ever supposed to be. What this game did was bring the first-person shooter and network multiplayer to another audience. It was part of a larger puzzle. It got people talking. When Jim Gutton, the Xerox engineer who spearheaded the project, heard about this game, he fell in love with it. This thing wasn't a commercial venture. If these guys had worked for Apple or Commodore or any other computer company at the time instead of Xerox, this could have ended up on another platform. Easily. This game was not made to make money or target a market. It was simply made so it could be, and so it could be enjoyed. Guys, I want to thank you for watching my video in the very first episode of this series. This is a blast to talk about, and I can't wait for the next one. We're going to be talking about Star Raiders. Links for Maze are in the description box. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you'll never miss a game, and I'll see you right back here for episode 2.